A very good evening to you and welcome to the main news at 7 coming to you live from Kuwait City. I'm Adib Shaheber. Our headlines tonight, the first Deputy Premier and Minister of Foreign Affairs begins an official visit to Switzerland, heading an Arab delegation to discuss convening an international conference on the Geneva Convention. Kuwait's representative to the UN and international organizations informs the UN of Kuwait's donation of 5 million US dollars to fight the Ebola disease in Africa. Attacks resume as Israeli and Palestinian officials trade blame for the collapse of the Cairo truce negotiations. And in the United States, the Attorney General visits Ferguson City to investigate the fatal shooting of an unarmed teenager. First in Kuwait, His Highness the Emir Sheikh Sobah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sobah sent today a cable of congratulations to His Excellency the President of Hungary, Janice Adder, on the occasion of his country's National Day. His Highness the Deputy Emir and Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sobah also sent a cable of congratulations to His Excellency the Hungarian President, Janice Adder, on the occasion of his country's National Day. His Highness Sheikh Jabir Al Mubarak Al Hamid Al Subah, the Prime Minister, also sent a similar cable of congratulations. His Highness the Deputy Emir and Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received this morning at the Sif Palace His Highness Sheikh Jabir Mubarak Al Hamid Al Subah, the Prime Minister. His Highness the Deputy Emir and Crown Prince also received the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of the Interior and Acting Minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Mohammed Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. His Highness the Deputy Emir and Crown Prince then received Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Sheikh Khalid Al Jarrah Al Subah. And finally, His Highness the Deputy Emir and Crown Prince received Sheikh Dr. Mohammed Subah Al Salim Al Subah. The first Deputy Premier and Minister of Foreign Affairs and representative of the current presidency of the Arab Summit, Sheikh Sobah Khalid Al Hamad Al Sobah, began an official visit to Switzerland, leading a high ranking Arab delegation to discuss the possibility of convening an international conference on the Geneva Conventions for the Protection of Civilians during the ongoing Israeli aggression on Gaza. The Arab delegation is expected to hold talks with a number of senior Swiss officials to discuss with them prospects of holding this conference by the countries which signed the convention in the wake of the attacks on the Palestinian people. Sheikh Subah Khalid al-Hamad al-Subah will also preside over the Arab delegation in the meeting with the chairman of the International Committee of the Red Cross, Peter Mauro, and the UN High Commissioner for Refugee Affairs, Antonio Guterres, with whom they will discuss humanitarian and aid relief. Kuwait's permanent representative at the United Nations and international organizations, Ambassador Jamal al ghnaim said that Kuwait's donation of 5 million U.S. dollars at the orders of His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Subah al-Ahmed al-Jabr al-Subah, to fight the Ebola disease reflected Kuwait's keenness to address the humanitarian crisis. Ambassador al ghnaim who informed the World Health Organization and the UN Office for Good Coordination of Humanitarian Issues of this donation, told the Kuwait News Agency today that this contribution conformed with Kuwait's policy policy which demonstrates genuine interest in extending support for the sustainability programs in Africa, especially as Kuwait is the current president of the Arab Africa Summit. He added that the donation came at a time when the World Health Organization, in collaboration with the UN Food Program, is keeping a close watch on developments in countries affected by the Ebola virus in West Africa. The newly appointed UN senior official for Ebola, Dr. David Nabarro, warned that the deadly disease was adversely impacting social structures and that fighting it would require a comprehensive support operation between different agencies. Dr. Nabarro made these remarks while addressing a news conference at the United Nations headquarters in New York. Meanwhile, the United Nations World Food Program launched food deliveries to people quarantined in rural areas of Sierra Leone as the Ebola death toll in West Africa hit 1,299. We have this report by Salim Lajmi.
Uh, we have a technical difficulty. We should get back to that report in a while. We'll just continue with the news now. The European Union has highly evaluated Kuwait's leading role in the provision of humanitarian aid across the world and looked forward to interacting with the state of Kuwait. The EU Commissioner for International Cooperation and Humanitarian Assistance, Christina Georgieva, said in a statement to the Kuwait News Agency that the EU Commission recognized the outstanding and growing role of the state of Kuwait in international humanitarian assistance over the past few years, in particular its huge contributions to the humanitarian needs resulting from the conflict in Syria. The European official said the EU Commission was looking forward to continue its cooperation with Kuwait through joint efforts to pinpoint the humanitarian needs and promote humanitarian principles and values. She underlined the need for the world community to make more efforts to provide effective assistance to people in need. His Excellency, the Minister of Information and Minister of State for Youth Affairs, Sheikh Salman Subah Salim al Hamoud al Subah, announced earlier that the UN had named Kuwait as an international humanitarian center and gave His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Subah al Ahmed al Jabr al Subah, the title of humanitarian leader. He added that the state of Kuwait, as represented by His Highness the Emir, would be honored by the United Nations in a special ceremony next September at its headquarters in New York in appreciation of the outstanding humanitarian part being played by the state of Kuwait, as represented by His Highness the Emir. Palestinians accused Israel of firing a missile at the home of the top Hamas military commander in the Gaza Strip, killing his wife and child a day after negotiations for a permanent truce broke down amid renewed rocket fire from Gaza and retaliatory strikes by Israel. The resumption of hostility shut down talks in Cairo that were seeking a permanent truce between Israel and Hamas after more than 40 days of war. Our correspondent in Ramallah, Fatma Abdul Karim, has this. The ceasefire in Gaza broke down with more Israeli shells on houses of civilians in the besieged strip. And the Egyptian brokered indirect talks between Palestinians and Israelis fell apart. As the Israeli delegation left Cairo a few hours before the end of the latest 24 hours extension of the ceasefire and resumed shelling at night. Palestinians described the move as an escalation and accused Israel of time stalling and deliberately failing the talks. It's Netanyahu's government that peers for responsibility for the failure of the talks. Netanyahu is hiding behind security pretexts to escalate his aggression against Palestinians. So he rejected the unified Palestinian positions. Overnight, the Palestinian resistance launched a heavy barrage of rockets onto Israel, reaching as far as Jerusalem area and the Ben Gurion airport, which is the only Israeli airport. Israeli military officials started the day threatening to use more force against Gaza, statements which observers from Palestinian arena saw as a sign of internal floundering as the Palestinian resistance in the West Bank is also spreading seriously in the form of clashes with Israeli forces at different locations in the West Bank. This Israel, in fact, is uh, uh, trying to, uh, uh, to, to have two approaches, either to convince the Palestinians under pressure to agree on that uh, in the negotiations in Cairo, and if not, uh, Israel is uh, uh, trying to uh, 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 escalate uh, the uh, security situation uh, by uh, aggressive uh, attacks. Last night, clashes broke out between youth and Israeli occupation forces at the northern entrance of the city of Jerusalem, near the illegal Qalandia military checkpoint, which cuts off Ramallah from Jerusalem. No injuries were reported. The dramatic Israeli performance on the table of negotiations is clearly of synchronized moves between the diplomatic level and the military arms. The coming few days are expected to bring about the finale which will show what political or military hit Israel will use against Palestinians, whether in Gaza or the West Bank. Fatma Abdel Karim, Kuwait TV, Ramallah, Palestine. 
Moving to Syria now, and terrorists fired rockets and tank shells at a major airbase in the northeastern part of the country today, kicking off a long-anticipated offensive to seize the last positions held by the Syrian government. The attack on the Tabqa airbase had been expected for weeks as the terrorists have tightened their siege of the sprawling facility in recent days, capturing a string of nearby villages. The airbase is one of the most significant government military facilities in the area, containing several warplane squadrons, helicopters, tanks, artillery, and ammunition. Now to Iraq, where the Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi arrived in the capital Baghdad today ahead of his trip to Erbil in a bid to show solidarity with Iraq in its fight against violent militants. Renzi was expected to meet with President Fouad Nassoum, newly nominated Prime Minister Haider Labadi and outgoing Prime Minister Nouril Maliki. According to media sources, Renzi was also scheduled to meet with Kurdish leaders. Armed Turkish Kurdish fighters battling the insurgents in northern Iraq. The foreign minister, Frank Walter Steinmeier, condemned the barbaric actions of the terrorists and threat that their further advance could pose to the region and Europe. He added Germany would closely coordinate its efforts with France, Britain and Italy. Thousands of anti-government protesters surrounded the main entrance to the Pakistani parliament in Islamabad today in an effort to stop lawmakers leaving an assembly session. The protesters were calling for the resignation of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif over alleged voting fraud. The anti-government protest led by opposition politicians, the famous cricketer turned politician Imran Khan and the cleric Tahrir al-Qadri have virtually shut down Islamabad, raising fears of unrest in the nuclear-armed U.S. ally with a history of military coups and dictatorships. Despite the mounting pressure, Sharif has refused to step down, while the country's powerful army has called for a negotiated settlement. As the Ukrainian government battles to gain control of a major railroad and highway linking the area to Russia, nine soldiers of two volunteer battalions were killed in overnight fighting near the rebel-held stronghold hold of Donetsk. The violence comes ahead of a meeting between the Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Ukrainian counterpart next week for the first time in two months, aimed at intensifying a diplomatic push that could force Kiev to choose between continuing its military campaign against pro-Russian separatists or making concessions to Moscow to stop the bloodshed. Meanwhile, calls for a ceasefire from both Russia and Europe are growing louder amid a deepening humanitarian crisis in eastern Ukraine. The International Committee of the Red Cross, which is expected to take responsibility for a convoy of Russian aid when it enters eastern Ukraine, was still waiting for security guarantees from all sides. To the United States now, and protesters continued to take to the streets of the U.S. city of Ferguson, but the overall scene was more subdued than over the past five nights with smaller crowds, fewer confrontations, and no tear gas. Tensions rose briefly when someone hurled a bottle at officers who'd been a constant presence in the city since protests began after the shooting of an unarmed teenager, Michael Brown, on the 9th of August. According to police, no major incidents were reported overnight. However, police said they made 47 arrests, mostly people who defied orders to disperse. The slight easing of tensions came before Attorney General Eric Holder was to visit Ferguson to meet with the FBI and other officials carrying out an independent federal investigation into Brown's death. At least 36 people were killed. Another seven are still missing after a huge landslide engulfed homes in western Japan as steep hillsides saturated by weeks of rain gave way in Hiroshima overnight and engulfed the north of the city. Authorities issued warnings that further rains could trigger more landslides and more flooding. The number of dead rose rapidly from an initial toll of four, although emergency services said it was too early to tell exactly how many people had lost their lives. Back to Kuwait now and take a look at financial news here on the stock market. For the second day in a row, the three main indices of the Kuwait Stock Exchange were in positive territory by the end of trading with the price index gaining 28 points and settling at 7,339. The KSX-15 also added two points and registered 1,212 points. The shares of the Gulf North Africa Holding Company was the top gainer of the day, while trading was very limited in the Hilal Cement Company. And for a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Quake News. That's all from the newsroom for now. Thanks for tuning in and have a good evening. A reminder of the headlines before I leave you.
The first Deputy Premier and Minister of Foreign Affairs begins an official visit to Switzerland, heading an Arab delegation to discuss convening an international conference on the Geneva Convention. Kuwait's representative to the UN and international organizations informs the UN of Kuwait's donation of 5 million US dollars to fight the Ebola disease in Africa. Attacks resume as Israeli and Palestinian officials trade blame for the collapse of the Cairo truce negotiations. And in the United States, the Attorney General visits Ferguson City to investigate the fatal shooting of an unarmed teenager there.